try this one now. Though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still that hope that lies within reassures as I keep my eye upon the distant shore I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared but he
Hallelujah. you to grab your Bibles and lift them up. If you don't have one, grab the pew Bible in front of you. Lift it up for me and repeat after me. This is my Bible. This is my guide to living. Say it louder. This is my Bible. This is my guide to living. Man, I want to thank Brother Trey, Brother Woodson. I should say, I should say Brother Trey, Brother Woodson for his reading of the scripture, amen? amen? Amen. He kept looking at me as if to say, are you still on this text or are you won't change it at all? <laughs> I wanna zero in on the 23rd chapter. There's actually only one verse that I wanna concentrate on. It has captured me for a month now and uh, and it's in the 23rd chapter, and, I, and it's especially for today. But I'll read from verse 1 again. Uh, but that verse, uh, I will let you know what it is when I get there. Amen? Amen. If you, if you have feet and you could stand, please stand. Honor the word of God. And we'll, those of you who have Pew Bible, it's page 1641, Luke 23. And when you have it, say amen. amen. Somebody say, hold on, that's all right. <laughs> They're still looking for it, Luke 23. Amen, she got it now, amen. All right. Then the whole assembly rose and led him off to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, we have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar, claims to be Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. Then Pilate announced to the chief priests in the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted, he stirs up the people all over Judea by his teaching. He started in Galilee. And if I could add something, then he came in Jerusalem triumphant and has come all the way here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at the time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased because for a long time he had been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform some sign of some sort. He plied with him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. 
the chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him, dressing him in an elegant robe. They sent him back to Pilate. That day, here's the verse right here, verse 12. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. Let me read that again. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. If I had a subject for you, it would be what your praise really means. Look at your neighbor and go, hmm. Shall we pray? Speak, Lord. Will we thy servants hear thee? Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are strength and you are our redeemer. And let the people of God say together, amen. You may be seated. I had been captivated deep and bothered and disturbed by verse 12 of the 23rd chapter. Just wouldn't leave me alone. And I was wondering where it was all going. And when pastor had me preach Palm Sunday, I was still confused because it's, it's not your traditional Palm Sunday text. Palm Sunday text was the first set of verses that uh, Brother Woodson read, the 19th chapter, where Jesus is entering triumphantly into Jerusalem and the crowd is there and they start saying, Hosanna. Uh, in the King James, it said, blessed is the one that cometh in the name of the Lord. And, and you remember what he read. The, the Pharisees looked at Jesus and said, tell your disciples to shut up. And Jesus said, if I do that, then the rocks will cry out. That's the traditional one, not, not this one here in the 23rd chapter and the 12th verse where, where we see this unusual alliance by Herod and Pilate. And it didn't become clear to me, Pastor, until last yesterday when my mother and, and, and my first lady, I, I, I know we have a first lady here, but I got a first lady, all right, all right. Thank you, and she is beautiful, yes, yes. Anyway, where was I? Oh, anyway. Um, We were at home and we started watching Reconstruction. That is the PBS special that was created by Dr. Henry Louis Gates. It is a series that talks about what happened after slavery and the Civil War. And I would encourage everybody here this week to watch that series. It's, it's on demand, in case you were wondering. And you don't have to pay nothing for it. Can the church say amen to that? Amen. But it is a wealth of knowledge. And, and here's the reason why it was a confirmation for me. Because the official end of the Civil War happened at Appomattox, Virginia, 
when General Robert E. Lee rode in with his uh, entourage to meet General Ulysses Grant, who was in charge of the Union armies. And they were to sign an, an armistice and a truce uh, that would concede the war to the North. That moment happened on Palm Sunday, the second Sunday in April in 1865. Now what was interesting is what happened after that. Two days after they signed the treaty, the president, Abraham Lincoln, gave a speech to the dignitaries in Washington, D.C. And in that speech, he suggested that it was now time since we've won the war, that we need to at least begin the process of allowing black people to vote. And in the audience, a man looked at the person next to him and said, that will be the last speech that Abraham Lincoln will give. And that man was John Wilkes Booth. And on Good Friday, while Lincoln was watching a play at the Ford Theater, he was shot by John Wilkes Booth. When I, when I saw that, I saw what the Lord was trying to do, Pastor. Because what we need to understand is that Palm Sunday is an important Sunday in the life of our church. It is the beginning of our Easter celebration. But we need to understand, church, that, that although we have this moment of praise, that praise also brings a reaction. Can I say that again? We talk about Palm Sunday and we and we might even utter the words blessed is the one who cometh in the name of the Lord you need to understand that that praise brings a reaction and the reaction we find in the 23rd chapter of Luke and those first 12 verses where where if we give Jesus the praise you need to understand that there's another side that's going to react to your praise. See, y'all don't hear me this, this morning. See, see, see y'all need to understand that, that, that when uh, uh, Appomattox happened uh, in 1865, when they, when they ended the war, our forebears thought that that was the beginning of freedom. And they celebrated and some of them left the plantations and started looking for loved ones who had been sold away in other places. And they did it joyfully. But what they didn't understand was that there was a reaction to the freedom that happened in the South. Where you had folk who were like, they may be free and we may have to do this, but we're going to try to do everything we can to keep them down. Come on, somebody. What you need to understand is that if you're going to give God some praise in this house, you need to be serious about your praise. This ain't no joke because as once you give God the praise, you give a signal to the other side. understand what I'm I'm trying to say I'm trying to tell you that if you really love the Lord you need to give him praise but but don't play around with praise don't play around with with just giving him praise don't just praise God because you want something from God The way y'all looking at me, I might. Don't, don't give God the praise because you need something from God. God is God. 
He's God all by himself. If God never give you nothing, you still ought to give him praise. Whether you're rich or whether you're poor, you ought to give God the praise. Whether you're healthy or whether you're sick, you need to give God the praise. Whether you got everything but you ain't got nothing, you need to stand on your feet right now and say, God, thank you. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you. got to be serious about your praise that this is a serious venture because as brother Woodson read last week we wrestle not against flesh and blood but we wrestle against principalities we wrestle against powers there are forces that are around you right now who are looking at you as a prime target because you in this place right now Come on, somebody. You, you need to be serious about this thing. And if you ain't serious about it, you need to reevaluate what you're doing. So, be serious. Don't play around. Second point I want to make, and I had to write the words big because I forgot my glasses, is that there is a result that occurs from your praise. And the result is in your text. Where we have the religious leadership bringing Jesus to Pilate. And they bring him to Pilate and they say, this man is disrupting the whole country. And Pilate looks at them and, and, and uh, listens to what they're saying. And he looks at Jesus and he says, uh, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus says, you said it. And Pilate is like, uh, this, ain't, this ain't my jurisdiction. That's what he means by I find no basis for a charge against this man. He's like, this, this is not in my jurisdiction. You know? But they insist it. He stirs up the people all over Judea. They, they are all with him. And, and if they could say more, they say he came into Jerusalem and he had hundreds of people rising up and giving praise to God for his arrival. And then Pilate says, well, well, is he a Galilean? And they say, yeah, he's a Galilean. He said, okay, I'm gonna send him over there to Herod. So the whole delegation takes Jesus to Herod. And then when Herod gets there, he's like, oh, oh man, I've been wanting to meet this guy for a long time. I want to see if he could, could do a miracle or some kind of wonder uh, uh, in front of me. And he starts asking him questions, trying to goad him in to do something, but Jesus says nothing to him. And then Herod starts to mock him and Herod starts to ridicule him and puts on an elegant robe and says, send him on back there to Pilate. And because of that gesture, Pilate and Herod become friends. The religious authority, Herod, becomes friends with the political authority, Pilate and they unite against Jesus. I'm trying to tell you something right now. I just need to make it plain, is that all right? You've got the religious authority in Herod uh, becoming friends with the political authority, which is Pilate, and they unite against Jesus. And more specifically, the teachings of Jesus and what Jesus was trying to do. And I think about history because I'm a student of history. 
And when I think about history, Minister Edward, I think about our recent history with our previous president, who is named Barack Obama. And, and one thing that I think history, I'm not, I'm not totally sure because you just can't measure history from the present, Pastor, but, but I think what the way history is going to outline this period of time that we live in is that we had a black man become president. And then in the next election, there was a reaction to that. And I suspect history will, will, will plan it out that way because remember Mitch McConnell uh, uh, just a year into Barack Obama's presidency he said, we're gonna make him a one-term president. You still had that joker talking about he was uh, born in Kenya somewhere. And you had all of all of these political folk sort of lining up and, and they kept voting to try to dismantle what they call Obamacare. They, 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 they registered over 60 votes in the House of Representatives trying to get rid of Obamacare. And they stirred up folk uh, all around the country and the stirring up, you might as well admit it, is around racial lines. And the candidate that emerges starts calling uh, Mexicans by out of their name and, and starts calling uh, marginalizing uh, black folk and, and all this kind of craziness. And then that person becomes president of the United States. And then he begins to institute draconian policies that continues to marginalize the poor and people of color. I'm just talking about history, y'all. And then what's amazing to me is you've got so-called evangelical leaders who will stand in front of a television camera and declare to you that God put that man in office. Pilate and Herod become friends. They combine their power against Jesus. And some of y'all that say, yeah, well, I know some of them leaders, I, I never liked them in the first place. But the truth be told, we all gotta be careful. Oh, I don't hear any amens on, on that one, Rev. We all gotta be careful about how we treat one another. We all got to be careful when we want to lean less on love and, and more on tradition. Come on, somebody. I tell you, I get tired of, of going to churches, and, and my mama knows this. I'm tired of going to churches where folk be playing church all the time. They want to talk about love and, and Jesus and all that kind of stuff, but they still mistreat one another. Folk will still talk about one another. People will still sort of, you know, click up in the various factions. Come on, somebody. And, and again, they all get in these little groups and, and they fight out. I'm not saying it's here at 12th Baptist Church, but all I am saying that in the household of faith, we do more dividing than uniting. And we need to understand that if we wrestle not against flesh and blood, then the only enemy that we got to face is the one that's trying to get rid of Jesus. Somebody ought to say amen. It makes no difference if you're older or whether you're younger. You're a child of God. We're all in this thing together. It 
makes no difference whether you're on this faction or that faction, that you're with the deacons or with the trustees or, or with the ministers or in the choir or with the light-skinned crowd or with the dark-skinned crowd. It don't make no difference. We all in this thing together. The devil gonna try and get you anyway. I don't know if that was on my page, because I can't see it. It just came out anyway. I think, I think the last thing I want to say, Pastor, I think the last thing I want to say, as we look at Palm Sunday and think about what we're doing, some of y'all may say, well, it's kind of backwards that we praise God on Sunday. They crucify him on Friday. And then he resurrects on Sunday. It seems kind of backwards that, that, that maybe we ought to start praising after he's resurrected. But if you think that's backwards, then you don't know what faith is all about. Faith is not about evidence-based living. It's about heart living and believing even though the evidence contradicts. Come on somebody. You believe anyhow and you give praise anyhow. The doctor says you're sick and we don't know if you're going, going to get well. But you don't wait until God heals you to give you praise. You need to give them praise now. That was a group of people that called themselves uh, uh, the chosen ones, the nation of Israel. Their leader was gone. They had a new leader. They weren't sure about him. But then they go around this city named Jericho. And Joshua is leading them and, and Joshua seeks counsel. And he, and he says, what do I do, Lord? And he said, I want you to walk around the city. Don't say a word. One time every day. And then on the seventh day, I want you to walk around it seven times. And so Joshua does what God tells him to do. They're in a fortified fort. I can see people at the top of the, the wall laughing at them. They're not even saying nothing. They don't have nothing in their hands or, or anything like that. They, all they do is just walk. And then the last day they're walking seven times but as soon as they get done with that seventh walk Joshua says shout because the city is ours and they shouted and the walls came tumbling down there's a song that Walter Hawkins sung he said don't wait till the battle is over you need to shout now because you know in the end that you're going to win. You might be going through something right now. Don't wait for the evidence. The devil is going to try to fool you. You just depend on Jesus. Put your faith in the word of God. Trust in the spirit of God. And everything is going to be all right. You won't have to worry about Pilate or Herod because Jesus got all of this. Come on, somebody. You don't have to worry about Donald Trump or Vladimir Putin. Jesus got all of this. You don't have to worry about David Duke or Steve Bannon. Jesus got all of this. You don't have to worry about it.
just remember your praise means that you know that God is on your side and no matter what comes your way God's got you God's got you So don't leave out of here and not be serious about your praise. Even though the world may be against us, if God be for us, who who can be against us? Amen. Come on. Let's all stand. I'm really serious about about we, how we need to spread more love in our congregations. All of the vitriol and all of the hate. You got a young woman who's a congresswoman was elected in Congress along with with our, our congresswoman Ayanna Presley. She wears a hijab. She's Muslim. And we need to pray for her. Now there would be some people who would say, well, she's Muslim, you should let them pray for her. Let me tell you something, they're going after her today. They're gonna come for us tomorrow. But I tell you, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And when you have somebody as powerful as the President of the United States stirring hate and anger and discord toward you to the point where you have to hire bodyguards, where the Secret Service has to consider protecting you from the President, We need to be more loving. We don't have time for all of this division. Things are are getting worse. But you know, at the same time, people are waking up. God's people are rising up. And they're rising up all over this land. And we need to get to rising with them. Am I right about it? We need to get to rising with them. There may be somebody here who doesn't know the Lord. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I've known him over 40 years. I've never been forsaken by the Lord. He has always been there. Now, I'll admit to you, I have not always been with him. But the Lord has always been with me. And the reason why is God is love. He's got that everlasting love. He's got that love that that sees inside of my soul and sees the essence of who I really am. And he loves all of that. You may be thinking right now about your own soul salvation. I'd like for you to consider taking Jesus into your heart, into your soul. I guarantee you, for these days, you're going to need all the power, all the strength, and all the love you can get. And you can get all of that through Jesus. Men and women can fail you. Jesus never fails. Think about it. As we sing this hymn, number 228, for those who want to read along, Oh, how he loves you and me. Think about it. Think about it. As we sing, you say, well, what do I do if I want to do this? Just come right down these aisles. Shake my pastor, shake his hand, and 
let the deacons and deaconesses take it from there. We got a wonderful diaconate. They, they know what to do if you need to be led to Jesus. They know how to lead you. Won't you come and, and be a part of this wonderful fellowship? If you've been backslidden in your life and it's time for you to turn your life around, you can come too. And they know how to pray and help restore your faith and restore your connection with Jesus. You can do all of that today on this wonderful Palm Sunday as we sing hymn number 228. Oh, how he loved you and me. The doors of this church is now open. Oh, how he loves you and me. somebody here who wants to join this church or join a church we'd be happy to have you here at 12th Baptist am I right about that 12th yes. we're not a perfect church but we serve a risen Savior he's perfect in every way and we love him like he loves us and we are trying to make it all together we would love for you to be a part of this fellowship. You say, well, what do we do? Just come right down these aisles and shake our pastor's hand and you could begin that process of being a member here. And you would help us as we help the body of Christ move God's will. Jesus to Calvary did go. It's a one this morning. His love for all he did show what did he what 